Hey guys, I'm getting ready to start a new project here. Um, I wanted to show you kind of the before. So this is the the current state. This is a 1971 CB450 uh, K4 that I've owned for a number of years now. Um, most of the bodywork, I guess, tank side covers, um, headlight bucket are not the original ones. I do have the originals. So part of this project is going to be returning this bike uh, back to stock, basically kind of the way I got it. Um, but this was kind of... So the tank is off of a 1972, so that would have been a K5. Um, and the, the giveaway there is the this little piece of trim down there at the bottom. So uh, prior to that, they would have been kind of rounded over. Uh, in 72, they added the little chromed kind of plastic trim strip there. Uh, the side covers are also off of the same 72. Um, they're not any different than the, the 71, but I wanted to keep the original 71 side covers uh, with their original paint intact. So everything here, as you can see, is just kind of stripped back and kind of brushed and I to keep it from rusting I seal it every maybe five or six months with uh, what is it Gibbs uh, I'm not sure if it's actually intended to be a metal protectant it works really well uh, I prefer that over WD-40 because it dries without leaving any kind of residue uh, if you're sealing or trying to protect from rust with WD-40 uh, that's gonna you're gonna get it on your pants or anything uh, it never really fully dries so up front the headlight bucket is off of a 1968 CB 350 uh, early on they had metal headlight buckets before they switched over to plastic so basically the same shape and dimensions as the plastic uh, ones that would have come later and the ones that came on the 450s uh, except it's made out of metal, so it kind of fit with the brushed metal kind of aesthetic I was going for back then. Uh, the headlight assembly itself is also from a 68 CB350, and they fit a number of other models. I think maybe early uh, 175s. Um, so <clears throat> I'm running um, Renthal's Ultra Low uh, Street Bars. The bars that were on this bike originally were really bent, so I needed some kind of replacement. Um, these were a good kind of balance. I, I didn't want something too low that I wound up getting a backache after riding for a while. Um, so these were, were a good kind of compromise. And I may or may not keep them. I don't have a nice set of original bars to run right now. So at least for the time being, we're going to keep these. Uh, everything's already kind of wired up and set up. So this won't be a restoration. It really doesn't need it. Uh, it runs well. Um, everything is there. And it's kind of just a good original bike that I kind of swapped out some parts on. Uh, in the back, the, the shocks were in rough shape. So these are, uh, I guess, period correct. These are Red Wing um, KMC 330s. So I had bought these new old stock off of uh, eBay. They're a little bit long, and they're a little fat at the bottom, so you can't see it from this angle, but I couldn't run the chain guard with these. And it also it kind of boosts the back end up far enough that I can't really comfortably put it on the center stand, uh, which right now the center stand uh, oh, actually is still on there. Uh, but both wheels are touching the ground, so I don't really use the center stand with these shocks. So. Um, I'm not prepared to shell out the money for a pair of new old stock originals, so I may run some kind of just kind of aftermarket clone, uh, what, like I'm running on my Superhawk and my 350G. So I've been actually pretty happy with those, especially for the price. So that's probably what I'll do initially, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, this one is running, uh, I'm, I'm running a... I'm running Makuni VM32s on this, uh, and it's kind of 
this was more of an experiment. Um, the original carbs I'll be putting back on, they were just fine. This was more of a kind of curiosity a handful of years ago. Um, to be honest, for the type of riding I do, just kind of putting around town, I actually prefer the stock carburetors. These are a little more finicky, uh, and again, for, for me, putting around, riding slow, uh, I see absolutely no performance gain running these things. And for the hassle of uh, getting everything set up, um, these, they don't have a traditional choke. Um, it's actually an enrichment circuit. And those plungers, uh, you can see right here behind the fuel line, they interfere uh, with the, the position of the petcock on the CV450. So it took a lot of trial and error and buying random McCuney parts and trying things out before I got something that I was happy with. Um, normally, when you buy these kits, the right carburetor is going to have just kind of a plunger knob. Uh, the left carburetor, you can run the standard little kind of flapper lever thing, but then you're operating two of them. Um, so I just wanted something simple. I could open and close that enrichment circuit on both carburetors. Uh, so I'm actually running, I've got a choke cable adapter uh, on there. And in a little bit, when I'm pulling this apart, I'll go through everything just for anyone who's curious how I set this up. Uh, and I'm actually running a choke cable off of a Polaris snowmobile. And it's just a little bit of a, there's a little kind of lever here. You pull it up, it actuates both cables, lifts that enrichment plunger, um, and basically that's what replaces a choke on these this carburetor setup. So, and it works fine. Um, it's just, it took a lot of work, a lot of money, buying random things that didn't work. Um, and then I'll show you the setup I'm running for the air filters. Uh, my goal was to keep it looking as stock as possible, which is why um, I actually had a friend of mine uh, machine these spacers. You need to on the 450 no matter what because they won't clear the, the uh, valve tappet cover, whatever you want to call it. So you need to space those out a little bit, but to get the angle I wanted to fit behind the cover without any modifications to the side panels, um, I had to have these, met, uh, these made up and they work great, they look good. Um, but again, I, I think I'm at the top, I think I've reached a point where I um, kind of want to go back to the stock setup and run stock, uh, the original carburetors. Uh, I've got some reproduction air filters and I have all the, the tank side covers, uh, fork gears, headlight bucket, I've got all the original stuff. So. Uh, I'm going to kind of take you through the process. I'll start pulling things off. Uh, so I decided to try to run this thing one more time with the McCuney carbs on it. Um, I guess just for old time's sake. Uh, it's been a few years since this bike's run, so it may or may not start up. But the gas tank for sure was dirty. Um, so I pulled that off. I pulled the seat off to get it out of the way. And I've just got it hooked up to the bottle here. So. Let me stick the camera in a tripod and we'll see if we can get this thing started today.
Uh, before I start pulling parts off here, I want to give you a, kind of a close-up view of this uh, choke cable uh, that I have set up for the enrichment plungers. So basically, you can see it coming out of here, out of the, the right carburetor. This is a kind of two-into-one uh, choke cable for a snowmobile. And it happens to fit this, and these 90-degree elbows here actually work, uh, work to my advantage because it it allows me to kind of direct the cable and, and clear the tank, clear these, uh, clear the engine here, and it fit right into the cable adapters that I had already installed here. And then what it does is, so here's the right, um, and we got the same thing coming out of the left. The left one I have pointed straight back, and the cables you can't see it here, but run under this frame rail and kind of loop around. And then the lever that kind of actuates these things is just kind of hanging back here. So when you need to open the enrichment uh, circuits to effectively uh, enrich the mixture when, you, when you're starting it cold, you uh, flip this up and that locks in position because these are spring loaded. So you need a cable similar to this that can lock into position otherwise you have to hold it while you're trying to start the bike um, and then once you get it started you flip this back down and uh, in theory you're you're letting the engine warm up so these are kind of it's not like a choke butterfly that you can adjust as it's warming up it's either on or off so as you saw a few minutes ago when I was starting it it was actually warm enough out that I didn't need to open this circuit up and actually when I was trying to start it with it open uh, it, it didn't want to start and the mixture was too rich so when I closed it uh, and, and let that vapor kind of get sucked out of there uh, then it started up so it's one of the trickier things because normally if you had the just a little plunger here the, the peacock is sitting almost directly above this so uh, this was the only solution I found that was I guess convenient it operator it operates both carburetor plungers at the same time um, which most of the setups I've seen don't it's kind of annoying once you get the engine going you got to close this one and then fiddle with the other side trying to close that so with this setup um, actually them both it's kind of tucked out of the way here and it actually wound up pretty clean so I'm gonna start pulling some of these covers off and I'll kind of walk you through my setup as we go. All right, so now that I've got the cutter cover off, you can kind of better see this cable situation. And it's not the, it's not even tied off to anything. Basically, the side cover was holding it in position, but you can see where the cables come in, and it's just you know, actuated by this lever here, and it was just kind of tucked out of sight behind here. But and then this piece right here is the original kind of stand off and bolt that holds the air cleaner in place and then I've just got a piece of uh, steel uh, rod here to otherwise it'll screw all the way in so this allowed me to uh, tighten this up and then the side cover just bolts to that and, and then to get the uh, my goal was to have this look as stock as possible so I didn't want the air cleaner visible here like you see on a lot of these Makuni conversions they're kind of crammed behind the side cover um, so this is a piece of uh, I guess it's like turbo hose or intercooler hose and there's a piece of aluminum pipe in there to give it some rigidity and then I've got my uh, larger air cleaner back here and then the side cover if you remember it was sitting right here so looked pretty stock um, this serves a couple of purposes one to get the air filter back and then it, it keeps it out of the rain for the most part but then two this kind of acts as a chamber to provide some, I guess, calmer air. The carburetors don't like really churned up and turbulent air. So just by adding these couple inches of volume here made a huge difference in the rideability of the bike. So real, real simple, but made a huge difference. And I'll, I'll pull this off and pull this apart. I'll show you each of the, the pieces here. Everything really fit up well. These air cleaners will fit directly on these VM32s without 
forcing them on they'll tighten up nice and snug and then I just ordered uh, the steel or uh, aluminum tube and then this intercooler hose at the appropriate sizes so nothing's forced or crammed in place everything fits really nice and then these are just basic hose clamps holding everything together so give me a few more minutes I'll get this on the bench and then we'll start pulling that apart so here's a look at this carburetor setup on the bench um, I've got the left one still assembled here and then I pulled the right one apart so you can see so this is just um, 57, 57 millimeter outside diameter uh, aluminum pipe and it's also the same size this is 57 millimeter outside diameter as well and then this is um, this one is listed in inches it's uh, two and a quarter inch um, air intake or turbo hose whatever you want to call it it's I think it's four ply um, and so basically this provides a little bit of rigidity and it also allows you to connect the air filter to it and then just some common hose clamps to hold everything together and for as simple as it is it works really well it, it gets the air filters back behind the side covers so you kind of get that factory look it also keeps them out of the rain for the most part and again this it doesn't look like much but this little piece of pipe here by providing that little bit of extra I guess less turbulent air um, really improves the performance of these carburetors for just all around general riding so and then here are the the plungers on this um, uh, snowmobile choke cable and so these are the plungers you'd use um, regardless of whether you've got the just the little plunger cap or you're using the lever type and what you need is these um, these choke cable adapters so um, you need these to be able to use some kind of choke cable with these carburetors otherwise there's nothing for this cable to run through um, and kind of uh, compress this spring against so and the, these are Makuni parts and then the only other change really that I've added is I'm using uh, Makuni's lighter uh, spring inside here I'll put the uh, part number down in the description for all this stuff uh, at least the ones I can still find so I'm gonna get back to um, pulling some more parts off here I'm gonna take the throttle cable off and this one it was it was a pre-made one I'm not actually sure who made it for them I think it's speed Motoco that I bought it through uh, but I bought it on Amazon and I just checked the original um, link that I had saved and it's no longer available through them I'm sure there's plenty of other suppliers I'm sure motion pro could make you one uh, I don't know enough about soldering cable ends and making custom cables uh, to try to use one of the universal kits I don't really um, trust in my skills enough to do that so I bought one that was pre-made and then uh, once I get these pulled off I'll, I'll show them a little bit closer but so these boots uh, came with the original kit for the McKinney's that I bought um, the kit also came with spacers similar to this but they were to be honest kind of kind of shitty quality uh, they were some kind of cast aluminum but really really rough so a gasket wouldn't seal nicely uh, I suppose I could have filed them down flat but instead I had a friend of mine make um, make these for me these are just CNC'd aluminum the, the one for the left hand cylinder is just basically flat the right hand cylinder needs to be angled because the CB450 engine is offset to the left a little bit so in order to clear the the battery cage here um, the right hand carburetor needs to be kind of cocked out a little bit so this one's kind of cut to an angle and then that allows uh, spacing for the air filter between the, the battery uh, battery cage or battery box and the side cover that'd be sitting right here
All right, now that the headlight bucket's out of the way, you can get a better look at this. Now, you'll notice that this is not the, um, the original factory vinyl, I guess it would have been sleeving here. Uh, when I first got this bike, uh, most of the components were in good condition for one reason or another. Um, basically all of the old vinyl cable sleeving was either already missing or just so brittle the second you moved it it would start falling apart so what I had done at the time was just um, carefully snipped it all back and then just replaced it with this um, it's kind of braided I'm not sure what the um, basically braided plastic sleeving here which I mean functionally it's fine um, since I'm going to all this trouble to return this thing back to as stock as possible I'm actually going to replace this with um, a sleeving I'll show you in a little bit here that I've been using on quite a bit of my um, projects. It's not vinyl um, but it looks quite a bit better than this stuff and I actually kind of prefer the look of it to the, the shiny vinyl stuff but you can see here I mean, this is um, just about all that's left of the original stuff and it's just broken to pieces there's a lot of wire showing through and it would probably be fine but since we're in here um, we might as well fix it so I think what I'm gonna do is take the gauges off get them on the bench so they're a little bit easier to work with and while I'm in here I'm also going to be swapping over to LEDs for everything so that's gonna mean um, making up a little a diode harness. Um, I'll show you that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We get these things pulled off, get them on the bench, and then we'll we'll get started on that. Well, I was wondering what the first hiccup in this seemingly simple task was going to be. Um, somehow, this bolt um, has sheared off. Now that the nut on it was pretty loose, so I don't think it was um, the force from taking it off um, but let me as you can see it's still kind of jammed in this washer here but here's how long it should be and then here's what's left of this one so this little piece here um, sheared right off somehow so now the decision is do I leave it as is which would probably be fine because You've got one nut holding this, and then um, you've got your tack cable. It's, um, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, it's just kind of an annoyance. And to fix this, um, I would actually have to take the gauge apart, which this one, as you can see, has not been apart. I've taken these apart before, and it's not a huge undertaking, but it is kind of a... Um, well, basically, it's something I didn't want to have to do on this project. And let me flip it over here. The other reason is, despite the uh, the rust and some sun damage on some of the other parts, um, let me get rid of the glare here. These gauges are pristine uh, on the inside, and uh, as anyone who's familiar with these older Honda bikes, um, it doesn't take much sunlight to really trash these gauge faces. Uh, they either fade out, or in the case of my 350G, they kind of start to crack and wrinkle up. Uh, so I really don't want to start digging into these things because odds are I'm going to do more harm than good. So, but just thought I'd show you that real quick. Um, even the simplest of projects is going to unearth something. All right, so I've got the old sleeving off and the stuff I'm going to replace it with is this uh, it's called Insultherm True Fit and I'm, that's a, a brand name I, I believe uh, my supplier of choice is wirecare.com um, I've been ordering stuff from them for years I just order it in 10 or 25 foot lengths uh, in, in basically all different sizes and the trick is making sure it's you want basically you want a relatively snug fit but you got to remember if you've got to be able to get your terminals through it so this stuff does have a little bit of expandability but not nearly as much as this um, this stuff here I mean you can see this stuff will 
will expand quite a bit. Um, so you, that's why I have so many different sizes. So in this case, I've been looking through. It looks like this um, the four gauge stuff is going to work the best. So I'm going to get started fitting this. I'm not going to bore you with me actually putting it on, but I'll um, show you when it's all done, and then we'll go about swapping the, the LED bulbs. All right, so I got all the sleeving replaced on these wires. I'm about to uh, make the little pigtail for the LEDs. Uh, I just want to show you real quick. This is kind of my cheat sheet for this, but basically we need a pair of diodes with the negative ends tied together. Um, here's an example of what I'm making here. And that's going to plug into this, the, the indicator harness. Um, so one end is going to go to ground and the other end is going to go to the pink and then these are going to plug into the splitter inside the, the headlight bucket. So that's basically allowing um, whichever one's on. So for example, uh, the blue circuit here, that's going to allow electricity to pass through and then ultimately to ground completing that circuit without back feeding into the other one. So with the, dot, the LEDs, that's what's screwing things up. Um, and again, with the incandescence, the electricity can flow either direction, so it's not a big deal. Let's see if I can focus here on my cheat sheet here. Here's kind of my non-technical drawing of what we're doing. Um, you can probably just pause your screen and copy that. These diodes are super cheap, um, and they are, so here's the, the model number here. Um, I think for a hundred of them, I think I paid four bucks on Amazon. The wire color doesn't matter. Um, I'm using light blue and orange just because that's what uh, these turn signal sockets are stock. Pink I'm using, so I'm not getting it confused with something else. Uh, but again, if, if you've only got a spool of red, use red, just pay attention to what you're doing. Um, and then a little bit of the, just heat shrink these. And I usually put this uh, sleeving on just to give it some rigidity. It's going to get kind of squished in the headlight bucket a little bit um, And then if you want it to plug in without making any modifications to your Factory harness and terminals, which I, I try to do whenever I can you're going to need these little crimp on uh, Terminals here in the little the little sleeves uh, it used to be There were very few suppliers. I used to um, order from uh, Vintage Connections. Uh, I think that company's changed hands at this point, um, but you can get these just about anywhere. Just make sure you're getting the correct size for, for your bike. And I always, always solder uh, this little connection here because I have had these things, even when crimped properly, I've had them pull off. Take the time to solder them um, and they'll be pretty much bulletproof. Uh, so let me get this set up and I'll, I'll show you how this thing goes together. So these are the LEDs I use for gauges. Uh, you can get these on superbrightleds.com, which is where I usually order from, or uh, any number of places. Um, they're all pretty much the same. You just got to make sure you're getting the right uh, right size to replace these little bulbs that Honda used. And when you're putting these back in, it's not a bad idea to put just a little bit of dielectric grease here. Um, these can kind of dry rot in place almost, and I've had them where I've tried to pull it out to replace a burned out bulb, 
and this piece here just tears right off. So assuming yours came out and are still intact, put a little bit of dielectric grease um, kind of all the way around and that'll pop back into place and then if something burns out in the future it's going to be that much easier to get that out. And then over here the kids and I started pulling the forks out because in order to um, swap these fork gears over you need to pull the fork, uh, fork tube assembly out. So kind of a pain in the ass job to switch something so simple here but it's just the way it has to be done. And then the one thing I haven't quite decided on yet is whether or not I'm going to replace so I think I mentioned before these are the Renthal uh, ultra low street bars. I'm kind of editing this video as we go and it's getting pretty long so I was hoping to do this whole whole deal in one um, one shot rather than breaking it up into multiple parts like some of my other projects but uh, we're going on almost 45 minutes at this point. Um, most people are not going to sit through 10 so I think I may wind up wrapping this one up shortly and in the next one start gathering some of the parts that need to go back on it. Um, the fuel tank has a pretty sizable dent in one of the sides so I may take a crack at kind of addressing that and see if I can get it looking a little bit better. So as always I really appreciate you watching and we'll jump back on this project in the next video.